The FBI raided Trump's house at Mar-a-Lago. Well, the FBI executed his search warrant and took a bunch of documents and things. But yes, this is unprecedented in America. Yes, it could be the beginning of a criminal prosecution of the former president. Yes, it could be the tip of the spear of a political witch hunt by the Biden administration against a political rival. Uh, or it could be a mundane effort to retrieve archival documents that leads to absolutely nothing else. We just don't know. The FBI, and I give them a lot of credit because they're fighting forces that they're not supposed to be fighting. But what do we know about the search warrant that was carried out against former President Trump? We can't make many assumptions about the FBI raid until we see the actual warrant or until, you know, we see an indictment. But here's what we do know. The Justice Department is conducting at least two investigations that we know of into Trump. The DOJ is looking at his attempt to overturn the result of the 2020 presidential election and is also investigating the alleged mishandling of classified records. The National Archive is charged with collecting and sorting presidential material. The National Archives has publicly stated that it had to recover at least 15 boxes of White House records that Trump took to his uh, Mar-a-Lago resort. The records include some classified material. And we know that Trump has a history of destroying and withholding records. He was repeatedly warned about destroying documents, but according to CNN, Politico, and the Washington Post, he tore them up and threw them in the trash or on the floor. White House officials reassembled some of those records with tape. The National archives confirmed that the Trump administration sent the archives some documents that had been taped back together, as well as records that were still in shreds. I'll be doing a separate video on the Presidential Records Act and the implications of the Espionage Act, but multiple sources told CNN that in April and May, the FBI interviewed Trump's Mar-a-Lago aides. And in June of 2022, investigators visited Mar-a-Lago to discuss Trump's removal of potentially classified material that had been taken to the Florida property. One of those investigators, Jay Bratt, is the chief of the Counterintelligence and Export control section at the Justice Department. Uh, Trump reportedly greeted the investigators but did not answer questions. The investigators asked to see where the documents were being stored. Trump's lawyers showed them a room in the basement where boxes of records were being stored. Some reports said that the documents were marked with top secret. Uh, on June 8th, the investigators sent a letter to Trump's lawyers telling them to secure the room where the secret documents were stored. Trump aides complied with the request and added a padlock to the door. Now, I probably don't need to tell you just how insane it is that there could be top secret classified documents being stored in some basement in Mar-a-Lago, uh, or just how insane it is that the FBI raided uh, Mar-a-Lago potentially over these documents. But I do have to say that uh, they even broke into my safe is probably going to go down uh, as a quote for the ages. But th the search began early Monday morning and apparently focused on the area of the club where Trump's offices and personal quarters are located. The investigators met with two of Trump's attorneys and Trump reportedly greeted the investigators but did not answer questions. Investigators removed more than a dozen boxes of items. Eric Trump told Fox News that he was told, quote, the purpose of the raid from what they said was because the National Archives wanted to, you know, corroborate whether or not Donald Trump had any documents in his possession. Trump's lawyer, Christina Todd, said the FBI seized documents and Trump cooperated with the FBI. Quote, President Trump and his legal team have been cooperative with the FBI and DOJ officials every step of the way. The FBI did conduct an unannounced raid and seized paper. Although Bob said that the raid was unannounced, CNN reported the FBI and Secret Service communicated about the raid before it happened to ensure that it went smoothly. Donald Trump was in New York on the day of the raid and the Biden administration uh, was reportedly not aware of the raid according to CNN. Now, we can assume this raid did not happen at the behest of a rogue FBI agent uh, or a local judge acting without buy-in or notification of high-level DOJ officials. Obviously, serving a warrant on a former president is an incredibly serious thing and it's a decision that can't be taken lightly. The FBI and DOJ must follow constitutional and statutory requirements for obtaining a warrant, which we'll talk about in a moment, but in addition, the DOJ has guidelines for investigations of political targets. In 2020, former Attorney General William Barr issued a controversial memorandum stating that anyone in the Justice Department who was investigating a political candidate must run it by the Attorney General for approval. And current Attorney General Merrick Garland renewed that memo on May 25th, 2022. Garland's memo is titled Election Year Sensitivities. The memo reminded DOJ employees of the department's longstanding policy for avoiding steps that could be perceived as partisan and designed to influence uh, an election result. Quote, this is particularly important in an election year. Now that the 2022 election season is upon us and as in prior election cycles, I am using this memorandum to remind you of the department's existing policies with respect to political activities. Now, Barr's original memo says investigations, including preliminary ones, into presidential or vice presidential candidates, their campaigns or staff cannot be opened without the written approval of the attorney general. It also states that an investigation into a congressional candidate or campaign cannot be opened without first notifying 
the assistant attorney general and the respective U.S. attorney in the district involved. And if an investigation is initiated in line with these guidelines, then the investigating agency has to provide regular updates to the deputy attorney general. Now, Trump has indicated that he will be a candidate for president in 2022. So the TLDR version here is the FBI would not have applied for a search warrant without Garland's consent, and presumably they also would have gotten approval from the Trump-appointed FBI director, Christopher Wray. But what is the requirement for a federal search warrant? Well, a search warrant authorizes law enforcement to search a location for any of the following. Evidence of a crime, contraband, uh, fruits of crime, or other items illegally possessed, uh, property designed for use, intended for use, or, or used in committing a crime, or a person to be arrested, or a person who was unlawfully restrained. Now, usually those first three are lumped together. Imagine a simple burglary where jewelry was stolen. You'd want to look at the burglar's house for the stolen jewelry, uh, cash or drugs that might have been traded for the stolen jewelry, or burglary tools. And so law enforcement has to identify two different things. One, the person or property to be searched, and two, the items to be seized. Now, more to the point, law enforcement has to establish probable cause to believe that the items to be seized exist and will be located uh, in the person or property to be identified. And probable cause is hard to define. It's imprecise, fluid, and, and very dependent on context. The U.S. Supreme Court says that finding whether probable cause exists is, quote, a practical, common-sense decision, whether, given all the circumstances, there is a fair probability that contraband or evidence of a crime will be found in a particular place. And what does fair probability actually mean? Well, it doesn't have a specific number attached to it, unlike the standard of preponderance of the evidence, which is just a hair over 50% or more. That said, several studies over over the decades that involve surveys of judges generally agree that probable cause is somewhere in the high 40s, but beneath 50%. And it might be worth noting that some jurisdictions like Oregon have collapsed the probable cause standard and the preponderance standard so that probable cause means anything over 50% likelihood. Uh, but that is not the federal or constitutional standard. The constitutional standard is only a fair probability. Now you might ask, how specific does a federal search warrant have to be? Well, generally speaking, not that specific. Uh, we can look to the uh, search warrant that was used against Paul Manafort. It includes something very specific, quote, a Bijan Black Titanium Royal Way watch. But it also includes general categories of items like any and all financial records for Paul Manafort Jr. Now we'll get into what that means in practice later, but let's talk about the practice for getting a federal search warrant. Now, the applicant for a search warrant is generally a federal law enforcement officer of some kind, an FBI agent, a treasury agent, etc. Uh, and as of 2016, federal agencies in employed about 132,000 full-time law enforcement officers. And every federal search warrant is reviewed by an assistant U.S. attorney of some kind. Now, that's not required by law, but it's a policy decision uh, by the Department of Justice. Now, the application itself is a one-page template, and federal law enforcement generally attaches three documents to that application. The first is the affidavit by the investigating officer. Uh, attachment A includes the property to be searched, and attachment B lists uh, the items to be seized. Now, the affidavit is a sworn declaration by the law enforcement officer that sets forth the officer's knowledge of the investigation. It can include hearsay and even information from anonymous or confidential sources, though the officer needs to establish the reliability of that information. The purpose of that affidavit is to establish probable cause to the reviewing magistrate. But the affidavit is all there is. The magistrate does not get to consider any additional information, just what's contained within the four corners of that document. Now that said, the magistrate judge has to issue the warrant if there is probable cause. It's not optional. Uh, the judge does not have discretion to say, well, there is probably probable cause, but I don't think you need it for your investigation. It's looking pretty good on its own. Uh, once the magistrate judge has found probable cause, the warrant must issue. And what this means in practice is that the magistrate judge signs the application, the one-page template, and issues it to another officer authorized to execute it. The warrant must be executed within 14 days and during the daytime unless there's good cause to execute it at some other time. And this should go without saying, but I'm gonna say it again anyway, just because a judge signs off on it doesn't mean a crime has been committed. And just because you have received a federal search warrant doesn't mean that you are a criminal or have done really anything wrong. Uh, see Contra, all of the legal bad takes on Twitter. And as a reminder, 
just because a search warrant was executed on a particular person's property, that doesn't mean that particular person is the target of an investigation. Now, it is very common for that to be the case, but search warrants are frequently served on Google and Meta for information and data that they keep on their servers that are relevant to an investigation. They're not the target of that investigation. Now, and it, it's rare, but occasionally search warrants are executed on members of the media who have information or lawyers who represent the targets of an investigation. Nor does it mean there absolutely will be a prosecution. Just because there is probable cause doesn't mean that the government can prove a case beyond a reasonable doubt in a jury trial. That's a completely separate consideration in light of all the evidence, including uh, whatever evidence comes out as a result of the search warrant. Uh, the beyond a reasonable doubt standard is much, much higher than the probable cause or even the preponderance of the evidence standard. Though it's always good to remind people that just because you aren't convicted beyond a reasonable doubt doesn't mean you didn't commit a crime also. So, you know, so it goes both ways. Now, there are some differences between state and federal courts when it comes to search warrants. For one, uh, the states don't have a single uniform procedure like the federal courts do. Now, they all basically get you to the same place, but they certainly won't look as uniform as they do in the federal system. And uh, state judges have a reputation for rubber stamping applications for search warrants. The federal system uh, has uh, the Department of Justice that acts as a gatekeeper for search warrants, even though that that's not required by federal law. So state judges are more likely to get warrants that contain plenty of grammatical and formatting issues and might not have quite as much uh, evidence as far as probable cause goes. But in any event, the end result is that officers will show up to a location, knocking on the door, notifying the people inside of the search warrant, and then searching the scene. That means getting everyone out of the place so that they can't tamper with evidence or present a threat. Uh, the officers then search the place in accordance with what's allowed in the warrant. They can search for the items authorized by the warrant and open any containers that could reasonably contain the items, including safes, lock boxes, and the like. And using the Paul Manafort search warrant as an example, uh, we saw that there was a pretty big category, any and all financial records for Paul Manafort Jr. So let's say that you're one of the FBI agents on the scene. You would basically look for documents and papers. You, and let's say that you find a manila folder that contains a hundred or so pages. You might skim through it, and as you do, you see a couple of financial records that pertain to Paul Manafort. You would then likely seize the entire Manila folder. There are two reasons for this. One, uh, people typically keep financial records with other financial records or related records, and those uh, related records might be needed to make sense of the specific financial records that they're kept with. And second, uh, you don't have time at the scene to fully understand how all the documents link together. In other words, you don't understand the import of those documents at the scene. So you'd probably take the entire Manila folder and notate uh, on an inventory form, something like manila folder containing financial documents located in the lower right-hand desk drawer in the office. Now, agents keep an inventory of what items they seize and where they found those items. They are required by law to do this. Uh, when they're done executing the search warrant, they will leave a copy of the search warrant as well as a copy of the inventory of things seized. Now, it's important to note, uh, they do not leave a copy of the affidavit. All they will leave is the one-page application along with the two attachments listing the property to be searched and the items to be seized. After that, the investigating officers would then return the search warrant to the magistrate and it would specify the date and time the warrant was executed and include the inventory of items seized. So what's next? Well, Trump has a copy of the search warrant, but not the supporting affidavit. He could release it if he chose to. There's no legal reason why he couldn't release it. Uh, and it's interesting that he has chosen not to. And additionally, there are reports of a mole or informant inside of Mar-a-Lago, which might explain the exigency of the FBI search of Mar-a-Lago. Uh, additionally, the Florida Times Union, Judicial Watch, and the New York Times have filed a motion to unseal the records. The supporting affidavit is sealed to protect the investigation, and generally the DOJ doesn't comment on ongoing investigations because it could jeopardize the investigation and tip off other targets, or the target who is the initial target. 12 seconds later. Except, of course, when the DOJ chooses that it's going to make a statement about an ongoing investigation, like when you're trying to get a friggin' YouTube video out and the Attorney General for the United States chooses to give a press conference. Duh! Attorney General Merrick Garland confirmed in a press conference that indeed he did have personal supervision over the search warrant that was executed over the former president's estate at Mar-a-Lago. And in fact, because former President Trump did confirm the search warrant was executed and publicly stated information about it, uh, the DOJ is going to move to unseal the records related to the, the search warrant itself. One gets the sense that the DOJ was trying to keep this quiet. And in fact, this comes on the heels of a report from the New York Times that uh, a, a 
subpoena was issued against uh, former President Trump to return uh, some or all of the documents in question, and that may have not been complied with, which might have forced the DOJ's hand to execute a search warrant to get these documents. And now we're facing the incredibly interesting situation where it's the DOJ that is moving to disclose this information, and it may be former President Trump who doesn't want it disclosed. He, of course, always had the ability to disclose uh, the receipt and the uh, the other pages of the warrant, uh, other than the, the probable cause affidavit. And now he may be in a situation where uh, he wants to keep that secret. But at least that's likely to be the last bombshell that we have to deal with in this particular case for a while. 12 seconds later. Are you freaking kidding me? So the Washington Post is now reporting that the documents at issue here uh, concern nuclear weapons, uh, which explains a whole lot about why this search warrant was uh, executed, uh, why the exigent circumstances, um, and why everyone is freaking out. Uh, it also throws a huge curveball in the people that were saying that uh, the president could just declassify documents on the way out of the White House. When it comes to nuclear weapons related documents, often that has to go through a separate regulatory agency. Often the, the president is in charge of declassification, but when it comes to these kinds of documents, that is not necessarily the case. Uh, it also raises all kinds of questions as to why former President Trump took these documents out of the White House and why he might have refused to turn them back over uh, when multiple requests were made, which is what has been alleged. Uh, so we'll, uh, we'll cover all of the potential criminal implications of this in a separate video, uh, but this whole situation is raising all kinds of questions. But one thing is for sure, keeping a bunch of classified documents in a basement would be a pretty stupid move. But they could quickly get their brains back to functioning correctly with a logic or math course from today's sponsor, Brilliant. Brilliant is an online learning platform for STEM that replaces lecture videos with hands-on interactive lessons. Brilliant is for curious learners, both young and old, professional and inexperienced. You could quickly learn to ace your high school or college math courses, or just learn stuff you always wanted to. One of my favorite courses is all about logic. Brilliant's logic courses cover uh, liar and truth teller riddles, logical fallacies, machine logic, and even some strategic game theory. And logic is a crucial skill that lawyers uh, and former presidents need every day. Uh, Brilliant statistics and finance classes are also extraordinary. Now, Brilliant lets you learn by doing rather than just listening to hours of boring lectures. Learning through doing is scientifically proven to be the most effective way to master any new skill. The courses have storytelling, interactive challenges, and problems to solve. So you can sign up and start learning today for free by clicking on the link that's on screen right now or in the description. The first 200 people to sign up will also get 20% off their annual subscriptions. So by clicking on the link that's on screen or the description, you'll get 20% off your subscription to Brilliant. Plus, clicking on that link really helps out this channel. And after that, click on this playlist for more Legal Eagle, or I'll see you in court.